Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we have a story of a man who found out his wife has been cheating on him with a co-worker. And this is what he finally did. Here's the full story with 4 updates. I guess it's my turn to share heartbreaking story happened to me recently. Please apologize me for grammar, I am not a native speaker by any means, however I'll try my best. The marriage. We were a great family with two lovely kids for a 10 wonderful years. As any marriage on the planet we had our ups and downs. We went through thick and thin like lack of money, no vacations for a long time. We worked a lot, but still we loved and valued each other and were a good friends to each other. We had plans, we had dreams, we wanted to get all together. We are now have a great, well-paid jobs, we can have everything we want, we can go everywhere we want. All those bad times and lack of something is far behind. I loved my beautiful wife so much, I appreciated every moment we spent together, any memory, any kiss, hug, her smile, the way she looked at me. I've been thankful to God for giving me such a great person by my side. I believe she loved me too until something has broken. Our kids is the best that ever happened to our family. I love them more than anything. My wife loves them more than anything and they know it. They feel that they have best parents in a whole universe. The story. Back in February 2022 the full-scale war started in our country. We were scared, we were stressed, our city was under constant missile attacks and we took a quick decision to move into western part of the country for our safety. Few weeks later the situation started to escalate and my wife's good female friend told us that there is an apartment waiting for them in Europe, so they can stay there and wait until this over. We didn't have much time to think under such extreme circumstances, so I bought a ticket for a bus, put my wife, kids and mother-in-law there and they fled to Europe. Unfortunately, men in our country are not allowed to cross the borders due to martial law, so I had to stay in home country. Month later I returned back to my city, where my parents stay, they refused to leave their house and told us to save the kids no matter what back in those hot days. I felt tired all the time, I felt dizzy, exhausted. I visited doctors many time and all they say that this is war, everybody tired, everybody exhausted. You work so much, your family is far away, so you miss them and feel stressed. Here, take these pills, try to relax and live your life. They were right to some extent until that scary day in August 2022 when I was diagnosed with thyroid cancer. It was found by accident, during another visit to another doctor. I was devastated. I was depressed. Everything stopped. I've reached the bottom, the darkness, the emptiness. I cried a lot. Cried few times in my life. My wife cried with me. Everybody was shocked and confused. Anyway, thanks to my wife and support of my family circle I've found some inner strength and started to prepare for surgery. Thyroid cancer in my particular case required the removal of all sections of thyroid gland. The treatment in my case was successful, but I have to change my lifestyle to the core. Less stress, more rest and healthy stuff. The first few months after the surgery in late August 2022 were pretty tough. First it was a wound on my neck. That hurts as hell and I barely can eat or swallow. Second it was my depression that have been waiting for me around the corner. The enormous hormones level and overall loneliness made me feel depressed and vulnerable. I've started to lose ground. I've been missing my wife and my kids even more. You may ask did they have a possibility to visit you? Yes, they did. And my wife came to me in September 2022 for a few weeks to take care of me. Once she left I felt completely broken. Like this is my life now. The war, the distance between us, how long I should take those punches. Eventually, I put my crap together and went to therapy. It was tough at the beginning but now I started to return back to my previous life. Still, there is so much things to work on. But I smile again and even can see my future with my beautiful family. But in December 2022 it all started to fall apart. My family currently lives in some sort of social apartment with other refugees from our country, mostly women and kids. She knows most of them very well because all of them came from her home city and most of them are connected with the same people who invited my wife. So fast forward. When the winter came my wife started to become distant and cold. She became close with most off young women at that place and they started to partying here and there, bars, cafes, restaurants. I know that she doesn't get along very well with her mother, they often have fights about every tiny thing. Her mother also didn't like her parties. Sometimes she was very abusive and controlling saying that she must stay at home with her kids and even though she was right to some extent I didn't want to keep my wife inside the cage and I've always tried to protect her against her mom. She is very emotional person and I thought that her mental state is related to the atmosphere in their house, and that's why she needed hangouts sometimes. In the meantime I had a feeling that my wife stopped to care about me anymore. She asked how I feel less and less, she rarely told me back that she loves me. 
When I lost my patience I started to ask pretty direct questions like is everything okay between us? Do you still care for me? Do you miss me? The answers were always positive of course I miss you, I care for you, everything is fine, I'm just tired. In the same time she told with me that I've became an alarmist, that she is too tired and can't give me and her mother what we want from her. But all I've been asking is her attention as she had so many excuses why she can't provide it. I was scared, this is not my wife anymore. I felt guilty all the time because I've became alarmist and contribute to overall pressure that my wife is experiencing, so I stepped down. The affair. Few months later my oncologist told me that I have a chance to make a documents which may allow me to cross the border. This is it. My exact thoughts. I can finally visit my family. I can kiss my wife. I can hug my kids. I can take them to the sea coast. I can do everything. The closer to my documents readiness the more distant my wife became. No matter what I've asked, it was always fine and I have nothing to worry about. And finally in May 2023 I am here. My kids are crying and smiling, they are happy as well as my wife, but something is not there. She didn't even cook any dinner, just a bunch of dirty dishes and mess around the house. Our first night and no sex. Like what the F, you didn't see me for almost a year, those three weeks in September 2022 doesn't count, and you don't want any intimacy. I've tried to initiate something but she felt tired and wanted to sleep. One week passed and we hardly had one time. No kisses, no holding hands, no hugs. I've sat with her and started a conversation if everything is fine between you and me. And you guess what? Everything is fine. Honey, I just waited for so long that I am not so sex addicted anymore. But it's not about you, we are good, I am just tired and I also need some space. My suspicious started to grow exponentially. Yes, we had tough times in our marriage when we were so tired that we had sex a few times in a month, but for F's sake the year and space. A few days later I noticed some stranger's message on her phone, but I didn't saw a context as the screen was locked. She told me then that this is one of her new bosses. I was a bit worried and the next day found that this new boss liked her photos in social media. I immediately started another conversation about her feelings and who is that guy and she told me that she doesn't know what she feels for me and that guy is just a friend. I was ruined, but tried to stay calm. I understand we've been separated by distance for some time. I agree that it was hard for both of us, so I decided to give her some time and space even though I wasn't a fan of that decision. So, I've been nervous all the time but as I mentioned I decided to take my family to the seacoast and try to relax. We spent a great week together, we talked so much, we drank so much, we made love, we kissed, everything was fine. And finally, the regular night with the girls. I wanted to sleep but I can't. I opened that POS page and here we are. He is checked in at the same place where my wife and other girls was partying. I approached her laptop. We don't have a secrets, so I had touch ID in there. Opened a few messengers and found bears. Digital flirting, texting, I love you, I miss us with another guy from that so-called boss company. I felt down, my heart was broken. I ran away from that home and met her in the night. She saw my eyes, she understand that I know. It was hard, I was hurt. Yes, she confessed, but only after I caught her. She thought she deleted everything. I spent a few more weeks with my kids and her. I was so shocked that I tried to put all the blame on me. I was looking for some reasonable explanations. We slept in one bed, we had sex all that time and I tried to get her back. But she was stone cold. Their affair was a few months long, so while I was getting all documents she started new life behind my back. After I came back to my home country I've started to analyze the situation. I tried to have a conversation with her, but she just asked for more time to figure it out. I suggested to go to marriage counseling twice but she just ignored that like I never said it. It was her choice, it was her decision to ruin everything. I lost her forever, I lost myself. She betrayed me while I was battling cancer and needed her the most. I am devastated. I am ruined. I feel unworthy, miserable human being. She tried to put a blame on me for her adultery but instead I confronted her and told her to shut up. Why on earth you never talk to me about your feelings? I never saw that coming. I've been thinking that we finally happy and can relax after chasing our dreams for so many years. If she ever told me that she is unhappy I would have fixed everything or at least try to fix it and she was dead silent. I believe things like this never happens within one day. I just don't get why she never openly communicated her feelings and needs to me. Last summer I've got a paper letter from her where she expressed how she loves me and miss me and that she counts the days when we can be together. I am going through our text messages every night and I swear I can't believe it was all her lies. I am trying hard to start a healing process now, but seeing her every time I see these disgusting texts between her and him. These photos she never sent me. These love words she told him and me every single day of her affair. 
I can't believe how someone who promised me to go through all this nightmare together six months ago can betray you so hard. She won't even try to talk about reasons of why and how it happened. She is not remorseful. I only talk to my brilliant kids and thinking about filing a divorce soon. I am just so afraid that they may think that daddy betrayed them and ruined our family. I am not looking for any advices. I don't know why I am here. I am completely lost and just cried my eyes out. Her betrayal hurts as hell, as well as thoughts about my cancer which may return if I'll surrender. Thanks for reading till the very end. I am trying to stay strong for myself and my kids and not let the cancer beat me again. Thank you very much for your kind words and different perspectives. Let me be clear about myself, I am not a perfect husband and partner by any means, like no one. I am not saint either, we all sinners to some extent. But I truly love my wife, I choose her over dozen of women every single day, I only dreamt about getting old with her by my side. I cherished every single moment staying with her, I told her about my love every single day, and these words were my sincere feelings I never doubt about. I wasn't abusive, I wasn't controlling, sometimes I was rude, but I have feelings and bad days too. I always apologized first, I always tried to protect her, I just wanted to make this woman a happiest person in the world. I love my kids, I wanted these kids, this was my perfect family, my safe place, my own universe. No one is perfect, as so is my wife, but I fully trusted her and never saw any red flags which may signal about cheating from her side. She is not good at communicating about her feelings and I guess this is where it came from. Did I miss something by myself? Probably yes, I was so depressed because of my diagnosis, that she may feel neglected even though I tried to communicate the best I can. This is how I reacted, this is how I maintained disease. Still, I believe if you love your spouse you'll never leave him or her in the darkest hour no matter what you're going through right now. This is our crap and we made vows to each other that we will support each other till death tear us apart. Was I tempted to fell in love with other women within these 10 years? Never, she is my sun in my sky. There were a few women who tried to seduce me, who tried to step closer, but I have my own moral compass, my principles, my walls around my safe place. My dad cheated on my mom many years to come and they divorced when I was a small kid. Once I grew up I found how hard it was for my mother to move on after the betrayal. I promised myself that I will never ever cheat on or hurt the person I love. We are living in a different countries now due to war and I have calls with my beautiful kids daily. What bothering the most is that how my wife acts like nothing has happened. It is three months past since I discovered her affair with some random guy and we still didn't have any conversation on what the hell is going on. She talks to me like we are good friends. She complains about some random stuff I don't really care. She shares a photos of our kids to both grandmas. They still don't know. She talks about her upcoming vacation with kids. I shared my plans to be at my son's birthday. And she asked me if I am going to celebrate a new year with them because she was thinking that I will. I feel so awkward and disrespected. It's like her affair means nothing for her and my feelings means nothing. I've been sleeping for a few hours every night since the D-Day, and she asked me why I feel so tired. She is like an alien, like some other person I don't know and it hurts like hell. She looks happy without me, like I was some dead weight. I feel like crap and can't move on no matter what I've tried. I don't know anything about her AP except his social media profile. She refuses to talk about that man and how where they met. One month ago I found out that she followed back her AP on IG and confronted her again telling that I've made a decision and filing for divorce. She tried to convince me that she's been following him all that time and that social media means nothing. I am not agree on this, especially when you follow the guy who effed you for a few months. Anyway, she didn't make any single attempt to talk to me since D-Day. I may not be good at understanding the cheater's psychology, but from my point of view when you hear that your SO is talking about divorce and you are remorseful then you should pick up your cowardly crap and try to fix everything at least by start talking. I am not trying to manipulate her with divorce stuff just to start a conversation. Yes, I am still on a fence right now, because I'm processing my own feelings and evaluating my future without her, but at the same time I am leaning towards breaking up and move on separate ways. If you read my full story, I guess you'll find so much more reasons for me to do that. It's just that feeling that you loved this person so much and now you should give up on her because of her crappy actions. I must admit that I was fooled and manipulated and as some of you commented in my previous post the affair still goes on. Long story short, my son called me yesterday and while we've been talking my two years old daughter came into his room showing that her diaper is full. I asked my son to call mom to change the diaper and he told me that she's out and will be at home in two hours. My first thought was that she just went to her AP 
and I've sent her a message that our little sweetheart might be crap in her pants. She read my message but didn't reply. But once she came home I called her and confronted about situation. She lied to me that the affair is over all the time. She didn't say a word while I was talking to her. She just told me that she doesn't want to have this conversation now and that she is not obligated to explain this situation to me. She left two small kids at home to F around with that guy. How could this be the woman I married 10 years ago? So my initial plan has changed and I am going full NC except my kids. I don't need that closure conversation anymore. I am finally going to tell about her affair to our families and friends. I don't want to play those mind f games and being manipulated. If she doesn't respect me and my feelings, then I shouldn't respect and protect her. Edit. Please don't get me wrong. I am not doing this out of revenge or having a satisfaction by destroying her world along with her support system. I don't want to turn the kids against her. I don't want her to be or look miserable. She has already punished herself with her silly actions. I just want her to wake up and see that she hurts people who love her. She cut off all communication with our friends. She gaslighted her mom for months. She lied to me. She is lying to her kids now. I want her to stop and fix herself, not for me but for herself and for our kids' safety. The plan is, 1. Talk to our families and tell them that we are divorcing. I am not going to expose all the details and bad things about her, just going to be honest with them about the reasoning. 2. Meet with the lawyer and discuss the further steps. 3. Visit my son's birthday in the beginning of next year and discuss our divorce process directly with her before leaving back home. I've tried so hard to keep communication between us, but she can find 100 reasons why she is not ready yet. So I just accept the fact that my wife doesn't love me anymore or never loved for whatever reasons, even if they are a product of her imagination. She moved on with her life and I should move on with mine. I understand that there is no point to struggle anymore because the world keeps spinning and I can't waste best of my years for looking an answer that might not exist. It takes some time to understand this and I guess that last situation gave me some great insight and chance to self-reflect about my future and I don't see her in my life anymore. Do I feel relief? Not yet, but I guess I am closer than ever to it. OP, don't ignore the infidelity issue. Maintaining no contact with the wayward spouse is definitely the right course of action, as she shows no signs of ending the affair. Her involvement goes beyond mere emotional and physical infidelity. She is fully immersed in an affair fog. It's unlikely that you can salvage this relationship. Don't remain in it for the sake of the children. Instead, use this instance of child neglect as evidence if you're seeking full custody. Expose the affair to everyone, particularly her family and friends. Carefully document everything, and if she ever leaves the children unattended, call someone to check on them. They can serve as witnesses if needed. Consult with an attorney and follow their guidance. Cheating is not a mistake, it's a deliberate choice. She may believe you won't file for divorce, so she might continue the affair. Good luck and stay strong. Well, a couple of weeks ago I found out that my wife cheated on me six years ago. The way I found out is that her sister told me after going to visit her to find out how the delivery of her first child was. She confessed to me that six years ago my wife told her that she slept drunk with her best friend. In her words, my wife was very sorry. At the time she told me I was with my son and immediately after leaving her house I went to take a paternity test with him, fearing the worst. A week later I get the results and my fears came true. My son is not mine. For some reason, I began to see the boy differently, more as an acquaintance than a son. With proofs in hand I confronted my wife at night when the child was sleeping. She asked me who told me and I simply told her that it is none of her business, although obviously it will not take long to connect the dots that it was her sister. Well, that is not my problem now. Regardless of that, I asked her for a divorce, which is now in process, she was devastated. She swore to me more than once that nothing happened with anyone again, that she has been faithful to me in body and soul since then. I held back the urge to insult her to avoid complications during the divorce issue, not believing a word she said, mostly blaming the alcohol instead of taking the blame herself. After talking about it, she threatened me saying that she would demand full custody of the child. I was so annoyed at that moment that I told her okay, I don't want anything to do with something that is not mine, that she keep the child and I'll keep the dogs. We have two dogs that we adopted as puppies and they are currently 8 years old each. After my words she tried to convince me to take care of the child with her, that I am his father. At that moment I exploded. I was so angry and I had held back so much the urge to scream that I just yelled her to go and take her idiot with her. A week has passed since that and I am at home. It is in my name because it is a gift from my parents. She went to her parents' house with her kid. She has not called me since then. She left with everything and the half-asleep kid when I yelled at her, especially since it was the first time I really yelled at her, it sure affected her. 
I talked to my parents and my dad told me that I did the right thing and that I shouldn't be raising something that is not of my blood. And I agree with him. However, the pain is still there. My younger brother told me to write here to entertain myself. I am currently seeing a therapist three times a week who told me that I have already taken the first step, which was to leave behind what causes me pain. It just hurts to know that my family no longer exists. Regarding why my sister-in-law told me everything, according to her, she felt guilty seeing me always happy with my son, knowing that he may not be mine, and that the fact that we went to visit her in a moment of weakness caused her to completely break down with guilt. I don't know how true that is, I just know that right now I feel tremendous hatred for my wife and a feeling between pain and resentment for the child, although it's just time to get ahead. I just hope the divorce goes smoothly. We have separate finances and properties and if she really asks for child support I have proof that it's not mine. According to my lawyer that's more than enough if she tries a legal process for that. My therapist also recommended that I not see him nor her, that regardless of the child's feelings, I should focus on my own first, that the child is no longer my problem and the sooner I accept it, the better. Sorry for the misspellings, English is not my first language. I am not from the United States, I am Latin American. In case you have doubts about the legal process to follow, at least in my country, if there is no biological link, which there is not, then a person can legally renounce the assumed paternity of a child in case both parents are in the process of separating. The process mentioned above is a civil process. Criminally, I can also denounce my future ex-wife to request compensation. But I don't have the energy to go through a criminal process which is usually much more aggressive than a civil one. For those who say that I do not love the child, the fact that I feel bad means that if I love him, but I know that it is wrong to love him. It is very different from adopting a child or raising someone else's child because in both cases you have full knowledge of the subject. That was not my case, I'm sorry. I have no relationship beyond cordiality with my sister-in-law. I don't know her motivations for confessing what she said and the truth is that I don't care. The thing is that it happened and we must act accordingly. I am not going to replace my therapist, I trust his professionalism, and as he said my job is to ensure your mental and emotional well-being. You are my patient, not your future ex-wife nor her son are, only you. So I trust his judgment. The reason why I preferred to keep my dogs is because with them I had the decision to adopt them, something different with the child. In the same way, I want to clarify that I did not yell idiot to the child, but rather I said it to my ex referring to the child. I did not tell him directly. I have no intention of having contact with them again. All the bidding is being done by my lawyer. I will only meet with my ex in case something needs to be negotiated. But considering that I am appealing the paternity of the child and that we have separate finances, there should be nothing to negotiate. With all this, I thank everyone for commenting. Everyone has their opinions, and if you raise children that are not yours, well, okay, you are within your rights, just as I am within my rights not to. You have the right to judging me. But that won't take away from the fact that your truth has the same weight as my truth, because in the end both are just points of view. Well, two weeks have passed since my first publication and three weeks since everything happened. Not many relevant things have really happened, but here is a short summary. Approximately three days after my publication my ex came to my house and asked to come in. I went out and met her at the door. I told her that she is not going to set foot in my house while I am here, if she is going to say anything. Let it be at the door, well, she practically begged me to take her son back. That if I want to cut off all contact with her, that's fine, that she deserves it, but that she can't raise a child alone, that she has job, that raising him alone is going to destroy her dream of being a notary. She works in public records and is two more years away from running for the judiciary to get a vacancy to have her own notary. I tried to explain to her in the calmest way I could that my therapist is the one who recommended me to cut off all contact with the two of them and to please leave my door before I lose my mind. I love the child but I don't want to take out my anger on an innocent, even less considering that this innocent is the product of her inability to keep her legs closed. I said this last thing with a bit of anger, but I never raised my voice because we were on the street that the child deserves better and that she is currently responsible giving it to him. I don't know how, but that's not my problem anymore. After that we talked a little more, she resisted the urge to try to cry and make a scene because, once again, we were on the street and she is someone who always she took into account what people said about her. The last thing she asked me was to at least let her see the dogs. I told her no, that the best thing is for them to get used to her absence. See her again after so much time will only make them euphoric. After that she just nodded and left. 
two days after that she called me when she received the divorce papers. My mistake was answering the phone because immediately after about 30 minutes she was yelling. To which I later managed to say that the papers must have the number of my civil lawyer. So she can call her if she has any questions. After that I silenced her number. She has not come to my house since then nor tried to call again. That same day I contacted a friend that I made during my master's degree. And I told her to go out. She accepted and well. We've been going out since then. Finally last Friday I told her to be an exclusive couple and she accepted. She has stayed sleep at my house for a few days. She already knows my dogs and adores them. Which I appreciate because I couldn't start something with someone who doesn't accept my pets. We are currently taking things easy. She knows the drama I am having with my ex and the child. And she respects my decision. She asked me if I will ever have contact with the child again. I told her maybe when he is of age to understand my decisions. But that I don't expect it to interfere with my life in the future, to which she just nodded and was glad that I take myself as a priority during this process. Maybe this took a little longer than I expected, but this is the summary of what happened these days and well, many people have been asking me for an update so here it is. Well, how to say it, I'm officially a divorced man. In my country there is a type of divorce called quick divorce, in which if there are no common assets, joint finances and children involved. The divorce can be carried out municipally and not judicially, avoiding the entire process involved, which would have included conciliation, distribution of assets, etc. etc. Based on what has been mentioned, you can guess that the only problem was the issue of the son that we both have. Well, there came the issue of the paternity test, with which it was possible to verify that said child is not mine and that my name was successfully taken from his birth certificate along with my last name. The child currently has both of his mother's last names. Regarding how the divorce went, it was not easy. My ex-wife tried more than once to use the child's mental state to make me return to her, and although I thought about it more than once it was thanks to remembering everything that happened that allowed me to stay focused. I must also thank my current partner who supported me at all times and always supported my decisions. I already know that none of this is my fault, but having her tell me this also somehow helped me. Finally, after many discussions and with our lawyers involved, I told her that I can pay her half of what a nanny's salary costs for her son while she fixes her life, but that the other half, but whatever comes after she will have to pay for it entirely for herself, to which thank God she agreed. But I told her not to expect me to take care of her son for her, to which she agreed. She has always been a person very dedicated to her work, so I suppose that having to be a single mother has shocked her a lot. In any case, for mere curiosity I asked her if she spoke with the child's father, to which she said that she tried, that he even lived with them for two weeks in her parents' house but that he and his son simply have nothing in common and there is no way they can get along. Even she has had to intervene so that he and the child does not end up screaming to each other. So, after a pair of weeks the guy just left her home. Anyway, although it is somewhat sad, she is a woman with a good job and with a good figure in a year that she will have the help of a nanny. It is more than enough time for her to find a suitable stepfather for her son. In the meantime, I don't plan to talk to him yet. Maybe I will do so in a couple of years or when he's a teenager. But if the child doesn't want to talk to me I'm simply not going to insist. I understand if he hates me, so I won't try to have a relationship with him if he doesn't want to. After everything we talked about the child, she told me that she hated me, and even more that I got a partner so quickly, which I thought was very rude because my current partner was there with us and I had to intervene before that an argument between the two occurred. Even though she ended up signing the divorce papers and that she appreciated my help, she couldn't stand that throughout the conversation I looked down at her, as if I felt compassion for her. She has always been a fairly proud person because everything she has achieved has been on her own merit. So me looking down on her as making her less than me made her feel hurt and angry. I told her that I know what she's talking about. I just have the same look as always. I seriously think she has some paranoia problem. But that's not my problem either. The important thing is that she ended up signing the papers and that I can finally have my life again. Although for a year I will be paying half the minimum wage for a nanny. It is a fair price for peace. I suppose, I had bad feelings for her too. But during this month I ended up just accepting it and moving forward. Yes, I hate her too. But not enough to say it directly or to wish her a bad karma. I suppose she has enough with her problems. I thank my current partner for having to put up with all this crap. 
More than once I told her that she didn't have to accompany me to meetings or worry about it, that they are my problems, but she said that my problems are hers too, and that I shouldn't carrying all that alone. The truth is that it has helped me a lot to take a load off my shoulders. She also understands that I am in no hurry to get married. Not this year and possibly not the next and she understands it. Well, at least this chapter of my life it is about to close without long-term consequences for me. OP, you absolutely made the right decision. Those women expressing a different opinion are probably individuals who have been unfaithful in their own lives. Individuals who ask, what about the child? May not fully comprehend that harboring resentment in a relationship is not conducive to a nurturing environment. There's also the risk that this resentment could lead to you venting your anger on the child. It's essential to remember that the child is not your responsibility, it's their biological father's responsibility. This entire situation could have been prevented if she had not been unfaithful, or if she had come forward and given you the opportunity to raise a child who isn't biologically yours. Congratulations on your speedy recovery and rebuilding process. It may not be a permanent state, but it certainly has the potential to be. At the very least, you had support when you needed it most. Good luck and stay strong. Thank you so much for watching till the end. If you really like my videos then don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Have a good day.